Hi, my name is Sheila Corona. Welcome back to Handbook for the New Paradigm. Uh, we are in volume three. At the very end now, we, the end is in sight. Uh, for those of you that are following along in the book with me, we are on page 383. Uh, the session is number 50, and it begins, The Greatest Understanding that enables the limited mind to connect with the totality of universal experience is through mathematics. Energy exists in precise cycles that can be read as mathematical equations. In order for universal existence to continue, all the pieces of the puzzle must fit together. Since life expressing is not a static existence, that indicates that changes are going on within the totality of the puzzle on a continuing basis. Variations are constantly being recalculated to continue their inclusion within the whole which is far greater than can be imagined by finite minds. <laughs> this is why I say there's, we, we make so many assumptions <laughs> that what we've been told is correct. Okay. <laughs> time and time again, we learn how, oh, that wasn't what we thought it was at all that's the whole point of science by the way is the study of the ever-changing environment <laughs> well in my view anyway <laughs> thus it is that it is that ca catastrophic events cause chaos and recalculation down to intricate details and these ripple outward influencing the universal whole the greater the catastrophe, the greater the chaos during the period of restoring unanimity. Knowing this, great focus is concentrated on areas to prevent such happenings if possible, or at least to lessen the causative factors. This is not always possible for the, quote, free will factor of those intent on causing such episodes cannot be denied. If all the individuals within the area of disharmony are not in agreement with the disruptive focus, then there can be intervening action to counterbalance the intended disruptive action. If those in disagreement specifically ask for help, to offset the intended plans. I feel like this is why, for me anyway, um, practicing uh, asking and, and being grateful for uh, the highest and best good for all concerned is the, for me, it's the safest bet because <laughs> see, so I don't have the full picture Let's just put it that way, because, you know, that solves for everything, <laughs> every contingency, it feels to me so far. Agreement with the disruptive plans does not need to be informed agreement. <laughs> In other words, the plans need not be generally known or understood, which is true, which is exactly how we got to the point that we are on the world stage right now. Passive agreement through ignorance is still agreement. So not knowing is, isn't an excuse. As it, it becomes not an excuse after a while. And I know this to be true because I am now catching myself running again. I've, I've been running. <laughs> It's different. It looks different this time, but I've been running from myself and I, I realized that just last night. So it's it's a forever thing. 
Passive agreement through ignorance is still agreement. This is the reason that so much effort has been put forth by various individuals and organizations to alert and inform the people of this planet that there is indeed a subversive plan moving toward completion. This plan, if allowed to reach completion, will deny natural evolvement of life. Boy, I'm going to tell you, on this planet and will allow survival and enslavement of only chosen ideal candidates those who do become aware of and choose not to agree with these plans must then come together in agreement to focus on a plan of their own to create a different scenario for the populace and ask for what is called divine intervention which is i, I feel like that's been happening e e even though it's not anywhere you can point to uh, based on what my housemate shares and what I've seen from the general light worker community in reports of dreams and experiences happening and downloads received, there's a lot of work on just that that happens outside of this physical vessel's reality, if you will. It's at least that's the observation that I hold at this moment. However, this cannot be asked of an unknowable God that may capriciously choose whether to answer or not, depending on his mood that day. <laughs> Such a God does not exist. Pure potentiality exists with multiple levels of awareness within its expression all the way down to third dimensional awareness and even below that level. All these multiple levels of awareness combined may indeed be considered, quote, God. That's right. There are levels within this composite of awareness that are very great indeed. Consequently, certain levels of this God awareness can and do hear and answer prayers that are addressed to them correctly, either accidentally or through the understanding and application of the basic laws that all manifested awareness exists within and honestly, if uh, right now I'm being flooded with images of all the beings who have, through their own creative imaginations of storytelling and movie making and all of those things, have and know this to be true. You've had the power all along, my dear. Uh you have no power over me. We've been telling ourselves this from all manner of ways of communication, but we trick ourselves because we've been told, well, that's just somebody's imagination. That's not how reality works. Uh oh, really? I have a feeling that's not true. <laughs> Back to the book, to ask is the first important step. To continue to ask never allows the process to move beyond the asking stage. I think that's why I like the idea of saying, uh, holding the highest and best good for all concerned, uh, because it that releases it from being any kind of what I might think of morality of what's right or wrong or whatever, because who made me <laughs> or you for that matter, <laughs> the, the judge of all of that, we don't have enough information <laughs> to, 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 to make in my view, a hard and fast morality calls <laughs> on any sort of level. <laughs> I know that's a that's a tough one for a lot of people to swallow, but, you know, that's the truth of it for me at this point. First, ask, assume the answer is on its way and then continue to express 
appreciation that it is happening in its own perfect wisdom and timing. I feel that so, and and boy, we we've been shown that in our book club from the very outset. We started with Florence Scovel Shin's works, and uh, that was in that very first book club that we had. Um, that wisdom and timing is greatly influenced by the one asking. And how well that awareness is able to follow through with the two remaining steps after the initial asking. This is often called prayer. Nothing can happen until there is first the asking. Then the two steps, assuming it is happening, continued focus of intent is what that is, and expression of appreciation, which is allowance controls the manifestation. It is that simple. A few additional details are helpful. And see, we've been taught instant gratification, and it's gotten worse, if you notice. Um, it used to be way back in my grandma's day, because I heard my grandmother say this, and I used to say to her, oh, grandma, you're just so old fashioned. You got to get with the times, right? I can hear myself telling her that. She was my great grandmother. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that, that, that was me buying into all of that uh, and, and instant gratification uh, being a lot, a big part of that, right? And boy, it's gotten more and more and more, you know? Uh, to take us away from realizing that allowance may take a minute. <laughs> Ask within a framework that allows what might be called divine intelligence or thought thinking to fill in the details. Doubt destroys results. Trust ensures them. It seems that these simple rules cannot be repeated too often for habits formed through misinformation are difficult to overcome, which is what I recognize within myself as programming for myself. We've been programmed from the time we've been born to think and feel and react to things in a particular sort of way, each differently, completely differently. It would be wise to reread this message frequently to remember these essential steps. I think that's true, actually. <laughs> Divine intelligence encompasses the benevolent galactic brothers, sisters, and androgynous beings that have evolved beyond your level. It is true that there are those who live in harmony within the God energies that promote evolvement at all levels of potentiality expressing itself. I, th I feel like these are the characters that have been named as, you know, um, the, the ascended masters and whatnot that different people um, get messages from. And, and I see channeling, uh, I, because I do it too, I see it as, me hearing the universe through my perception filters because it can't happen any other way. Everything that I've ever experienced on this planet affects how I see things, how we walk through things. This is why it's so unique to each person because you ain't walked a mile in my shoes ever, <laughs> right? And so how could you possibly know? And And if we would adopt more of that for ourselves when thinking and looking at other folks, you know, uh, remember that, you know, because it is all about that. This is the composite of all accumulated wisdom, knowing itself and continuing its expansive experience. All awareness is a part of that magnificent pool of intelligence. It is also true that through free will, there are those that are experiencing in disharmony with expansive intent. It is important to understand that self-awareness can purposefully destroy itself 
by continuing its negative experience to the point of destruction. Now, this is interesting because this is part of the question that I've been having uh, with myself, about myself, for myself of late in regards to my physical health. It is important to understand that self-awareness can purposefully destroy itself by continuing its negative experience to the point of destruction because the negative focus lessens or literally pinches off the focusing energies of the soul. That's what I mean by I've been running from myself. My soul wants to expand. <laughs> and I've been literally pinching that off. I see it so clearly. And the fact that this, and this one here is not lost on me. Because I just had a conversation with my uh, friends, uh, Journey Into It, Crystal Hemphill, and Lisa Flamino Rush, my housemate, last night about this very topic. And if they're free, perhaps we'll be able to discuss this very soon in a conscious conversation because I bet you that's what's up on the planet for everybody in one way or another <laughs> yeah Crystal was using the words crossroads last night and I know that's the truth there so back to the book I'm going to read that 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 feels that whole thing I'm going to read that whole paragraph again it deserves it Divine intelligence, in quotes, uh, encompasses the benevolent galactic brothers, sisters, and androgynous beings that have evolved beyond your level. It is true that, they, that there are those who live in harmony within the, quote, God energies that promote evolvement at all levels of potentiality expressing itself. It's very important I'm hearing to understand all levels. Not everyone is on the upward spiral. And this is what we all have to in integrate into ourselves. Some have come to experience the downward spiral and thereby serve a purpose to the good of the all. It's very important to face that. Because it is a true statement. You know, everywhere I look, I see that. And we can either be at odds with all those people or we can thank them for their service to the highest and best good of all concerned. I prefer that at this juncture. So these God energies that promote evolvement at all levels of potentiality expressing itself. This is the composite of all accumulated wisdom, knowing itself and continuing its expansive experience. All awareness is a part of that magnificent pool of intelligence. It is also true that through free will, there are those that are experiencing in disharmony with expansive intent. And see, we all tend to feel like that is um, constrictive or whatever. But <laughs> to certain souls that came to experience that specifically, it is actually an expansion for that soul. You know, we we tend to judge things one way or another. And I don't think that, uh, that uh, you know, based on some sort of prejudices against this, that, or the other kind of thing. And all of that, for me, has been up for review. It is important to understand that self-awareness can purposefully destroy itself by continuing its negative experience to the point of destruction because the negative focus lessens or literally pinches off the focusing of energies of the soul. I actually have to highlight that because I know for a fact that that's what I've been doing. <laughs> I know for a fact that that has been a part of what has been going on with me for the past two years, actually, now it feels like. 
Oh, my word. Because the question is, I've, I've been asking myself, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? You know better than everybody you know <laughs> what the hell's going on here. <laughs> so, okay. So, however, destruction by this method of weakening the connection to the soul is very difficult to do. <laughs> Awareness can, quote, muck around in negative experiences for the learning that can be gained and then return to harmonious experience. Well, that's good news because, and, and I, oh, and that I am a Libra and I'm constantly seeking balance. So that is, I tell you, sometimes I feel like I, I must be into some sort of extreme soul surfing, you know, because it's like a slip in under the fire. So I don't know what that's about. Many of those that might be considered to have, I don't know what else to do except laugh at, at myself because um, I'm here for the duration. So, you know, might as well enjoy it, but no matter what it brings, right? Many of those that might be considered to have great wisdom and experience have pursued both paths. Well, that's a true statement. To have a body destroyed by those experiencing within. What is considered negative experience does not destroy the self-awareness. Well, <laughs> I know that's true. In other words, unless deliberately chosen, there is no real death. Just the need to digest the learning available from the victim experience. Then acquire a new body to continue the next experiencing opportunity into wisdom and evolve within the field of potentiality. And when you hold creation in that fashion, man, I'm telling you that. Well, the limitless expansiveness, I feel I'm being shown that huge whirlpool portal again in front of me that just makes me feel dizzy because it's like an opening to all potentiality and the opportunities are just they abound the availability of bodies is sometimes limited and thus it is suggested to use the present one to the greatest advantage possible while you have it. Well, <laughs> that's a true statement, let me just say. And I, I've done an awful lot of damage to this one. So uh, that's, that is at the core of what my issue has been with my continuing negative things that I know are not good for this body. <laughs> because I do want to be here, but yet I don't, can't seem to stop myself. Got myself all re-addicted to sugar again. It's a horrible situation. Um, but now I, I'm being shown, see, between last night and today, uh, exactly what I've what I've been doing. So back to the book here. The availability of bodies is sometimes limited, and thus it is suggested to use the present one to the greatest advantage possible while you have it. Honor it and care for it. I feel like that's what Christ meant by, you know, the um the father's uh the father resides within the temple and and that is our our temple, our body is our temple. It is intended that a radiant quote being express love and caring for all life through through it by thoughts, words, and deeds. Align the overall individual intention with that framework and pot of positive results happen. Well, this is something that my uh, my housemate, Lisa Flamino Rush, has helped me see. And, and I'm, it's a practice because there's old programming that continues to stand in the way. But getting into alignment with the opinion that my soul holds coming to know and not doubt that as long as the intention is for the highest and best for all concerned, that the outcome is inevitable. 
a new paradigm is being shown to me at any rate. <laughs> and I'm I'm convinced we all create our own realities. Anyway, there's a collective component, which is why I feel the feeling of community uh, is why people feel to join with others in community because it's much more powerful. You know, Christ's words were where one or more are gathered. That's exactly what that's talking about, right? Well, that's the end of number 50 in this in the book. And I'm coming right back. I'm going to finish this today. So this will be going out there all today. I'm going to come right back with uh, session 51. Boy, these are really good and timely. Uh, until we meet again, I hope that you will be well, my friends.